What's the good word, Judge? It's your boy DKB here. So if you are like me, this is the news that you have been waiting for when it has come to OTA update. And uh, specifically, we haven't necessarily heard about a, a rising star or even somebody that's shown out above uh, everyone else consistently um, so far. But that may be changing. We have the new Jeff Smith version of the preseason, um, you know, training camp standout. And this time, the name that is circulating uh, around the New York Jets is wide receiver Jerome Cap uh, from Cutstown. Could be Cutstown, not sure, uh, but Cutstown definitely suits the way this man is built. Um, we're talking six foot three. 210 pounds so there's been a lot of big body wide receivers the New York Jets have added but um, seeing uh, kind of what he's been able to do so far went back and checked out a couple highlights and things it's easy to get really excited about him so to kind of recap how we get here with Jerome Cap, he made the team after rookie mini camp tryout so he got invited uh, was able to go out there and ball out ended up earning himself a contract with the New York Jets so here we are, uh, potentially took a roster spot from uh, Bradley and I, the defensive end, who ended up being put on injured reserve. We still have no idea what his injury designation actually is, and, and or at least the injury status, what happened to him, uh, things of that nature. So he will be back at some point, ideally before we need to get down to roster cuts. But it looks dangerous for him if Jerome Cap continues to be uh, this consistent in OTAs as uh, we've been getting information for. So some of the things that have gone his way uh, and kind of what has make, made him a really good prospect for the New York Jets uh, after, by the way, some of his most recent OTA highlights uh, was some pretty big plays uh, by Chris Streveler, our last preseason hero when we actually got to those games. Uh, but strong strong release off of the line of scrimmage they like him actually more so coming out of the slot when people want to kind of press up on him there uh so not only is he getting a running head start with a little bit of steam but when he does see press coverage he's able to go out there and beat that pretty easily for a rookie wide receiver which is impressive also likes to be involved in special teams uh, and we've seen that early on in OTA so when you want to talk about the adjustment for placement this guy is definitely doing everything he can to break into that wide receiver five wide receiver six mold a guy that should be putting someone like Denzel Mims on notice who already hasn't beat him out just for the simple fact that he's able to go out there and handle special teams duty so other things that we really like, uh, we know he began his career at Seton Hall University. He's near the top of his record books for Cutstown and receiving yards and touchdowns um, after only being there for three seasons. And then you want to talk about um, him c increasing his production each year, understanding uh, not only uh, uh, leveling his game up, being able to go out there and understand what the defense are doing and still be able to handle that um, generally in an above average uh, fashion. He's kind of a legend, at least in this conference, to a certain degree for being a Division II kid. And then you want to talk about the fact that he's essentially regarded as a game breaker, knowing that he was one of the only weapons on his team, realistically, a defense had to worry about. And he was still able to go out there and put up strong numbers game in and game out. Even going so far, which it doesn't sound ridiculous seen it but he led his conference in 2022 uh in yards per catch uh which equaled about 9.5 if i'm remembering correctly but um quickly learned a new system after transferring again another leg up not to knock denzel mims down but we know rookies can have trouble with the playbook so this is a guy that's been there, done that, and seen it already. Uh, so that should be a pretty easy transition for him as he looks to make the team in year one. Um, and generally, you're going to see kind of a blended skill set here between Alex Pierce, excuse me, Alec Pierce, the recent uh, rookie, I want to say from two years ago now, actually. I think it was Elijah Moore's class. And um, uh, Mike Evans when it comes to being able to go out there and, and uh, high point the catch uh, and do some of those different big man type moves there so 
I kind of like what I've seen from them, to be honest. I still got to break it down. You're not really going to catch a whole lot of information when it comes to scouting reports. You really just got to go and check out the highlights and whatever game film you can pull up. Uh, but the early returns on this guy looks really, really good. Uh, if he doesn't make the roster, which is still a huge long shot, keep in mind we have four or five wide receiver spots, knock on wood, pending injury, essentially locked down. The order just might change a little bit. Um, you're really uh, you're really not expecting a whole lot from these guys, but when you want to talk about build, building out a potential practice squad, when you have a bunch of big guys sitting in the wings like a Jason Brownlee, uh, and then, of course, Jerome Cap here, you get really, really excited. Uh, you know, Irvin Charles hanging around there. So, Looking forward to hearing more from him. Um, it seems like he's kind of been able to stack and string some pretty strong days together from what I was able to dig up. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are on our you know, early OTA wide receiver star so far. And I'll catch you guys again. Peace.